hello everyone welcome back to another video it's been a while it's been days right i have not uploaded i've not had time guys please forgive me so uh today uh story uh -huh, is gonna be i'm going to ghana i met this lady uh, recently uh she makes hair though she's not the one that made my hair and uh, she actually told me her story this story was just too pathetic and i decided to i want to share so this lady is from ghana and she said while she was in ghana uh she was learning how to braid she goes to this salon to you know she just told a friend that please can i come with you to your because the, her friend was learning how to braid she was like can i come with you she didn't even pay for agreement if you are from africa you understand what agreement is if you want to learn how to work you you pay so it's called agreement uh, and that agreement it can be for from one year to two years it depends on the agreement you have with the person that is teaching you or uh, let me say your metal so she said she didn't even have the money to pay she was just going there and she always completes the tip you know she completes they, they will bake the hair up to a, a particular point like this and she will complete the tip she didn't even know how to start it from the root so she said that what she was doing and this man some it, and she, there was an, a school close to where she was uh learning and she said um that school was um like a, a, the school for the rich so she said most times when they, these kids finish eating, they will serve them rice. And these kids, they don't always eat the chicken. So when they finish eating, they will go and look at the plate of those kids. And if there is a whole chicken and these children, they don't eat the chicken, they will pick those chicken and eat. That will tell you how poor, you know, our background was. She said when she was done with secondary school, so um, in America, uh, it's secondary school. In, in, in Africa, we call it secondary school. In America, it's called high school. So she said when she was done with secondary school, she didn't have the money. Her father was so poor, they didn't have money to like, you know, uh, continue her education. So she was uh, at home learning this trade. And one day, fate happened to her and she, this guy came into her, uh, came into the, uh, that secondary school, that school close to where she was making her, and he came to eat. So for the first time, they were kind of taken aback because they've not seen someone coming there. The only thing they know that that particular place was just made for those rich kids. They've not seen an adult it's just for children. They save children during break time. They save these children. So she saw an adult and what was very striking is the fact that this guy was so tall. The guy was like 6 point, six, she said she's, oh, that's 6.5. The guy was really, really tall. So that was very striking. And they, they were all looking at the guy. She said when the guy was done, they also tried because they didn't they didn't have anything doing at that moment in, in her salon. So they were kind of outside, just gisting away. And she was like, Oh, this guy did not eat his chicken. Herself and her friend, they went to pick the chicken and they ate. The next thing this guy came back and she was like, Oh, maybe this guy came back for his chicken and we have eaten it. So she said, oh, the guy came back and they just said like, ah, hello, we made, we ate your chicken. Something like that. They just, you know, they don't find out that this guy was a black American. And, uh, you know, it's not, he wasn't a Ghanaian. So they started talking and everything. The guy was like, can I come back tomorrow to see you? She was like, oh, fine. And everything. The next day the guy came. That was how the guy started visiting her salon. So one day, said so the guy invited her to is a hotel or something like that so she actually went she said when she got there uh she uh, the receptionist told her that that guy left that same morning but the guy gave her a letter something like that uh the guy left a letter for her so she said she took the letter opened it and the letter uh she was able to i don't know about one thing or the other one thing led to the other led to another the guy actually enrolled. The guy was like, you said you wanted to go to school. So the guy paid for her six months computer training in Ghana. Before the six months uh, uh, came to an end, the guy came back from the U.S. 
uh, the guy, according to her, said in that letter, the guy was like, I'm so sorry. I had, to, I had to leave because he was doing his PhD. So he came to Ghana for a research. So she said, one thing led to the other and they got married. You know, I don't want to bore you with all the stories. So, but they got, finally got, they got married. You know, the guy was like, you want to go to school? She said, yes. The guy was, the guy assured her that she should not worry. He will uh, put her in school in the United States. The guy promised her. She said the guy was so nice. She, after they got married, she became pregnant, you know, and the, oh, through, the guy went back to the U.S. Throughout her pregnancy, he was sending money. He was, he took care of her very well during her pregnancy and even when she put to bed. So when she put to bed, she had a girl. The guy started processing her papers, right? And that was how she joined this guy in the United States. But her child was, was in Ghana. So she joined the guy in the United States. So she said the first day she got to the U.S., the first day as her, her spirit and her soul and her body got to the U.S., she said they, it was an apartment. They got there and the guy said, drop your bag. She dropped her bag. She was, she was even asking, what room? The guy was like, drop it here in the city room. And the guy was like, let's go. She was saying, where? The guy said as they were driving, the guy told her, like the guy was like, Do you know why I brought you to the US? I want you to work for me in this America as a slave. She said she was like, Wow. Slave? She now told the guy, I know I'm going to work. I will work hard. I know where I'm coming from, but I'm not going to work as a slave. He said for the first time, this guy raised his voice, screamed at her, and said, You you must work like a slave. If uh, if if uh, the white people could come to Africa to take people and enslave them in the United States, why can't I also go to Africa and take a black person to come and slave the person for me in America? She said that was what the guy told her, and that was the beginning of her ordeal. That was the beginning of her nightmares. She said this guy started abusing her. The guy will, before she says anything, the guy will slap her. The guy will bitter the guy you know for after six months or seven months there about the her her daughter came to join them in the u.s if it, the child was more than a year or two i can't remember but the guy the daughter now came to join them in the u.s that was how she said this guy started abusing her. i said the guy who this time around she didn't know anybody she said she became so tiny she has lost so much weight because the thing was like um a nightmare it was it was as if she was watching a film because this is not the same person that she met in Africa. So I was asking her, does this guy take D-R-O-U-G? She said, no. I said, why was it? Why did it change? Why was it acting that way? She said she can't even tell that this guy abused her to the extent that one day this guy took her somewhere. And the guy was, uh, she had finished making hair. She said, the she has not eaten throughout the day. And this guy came to pick her from the salon where she was, where the guy took her to the very first day. Because it was the very first day the guy took her to the salon where she started walking. She, so she said, this guy came to pick her. And he was saying, we are going to another place. She was like, no, she hasn't eaten. She hasn't, she doesn't even have strength. She hasn't eaten since morning. She said she hasn't eaten anything from early in the morning that the guy picked her. The guy picked her around 7 a.m. And that salon was to open by 9. And it was during winter. The guy left her outside. She said she was cold. She didn't even understand the weather, nothing. She almost died. When the lady opened the store, the lady was like, why? Why did you come? Why did your husband drop you? You know? She said the guy picked her from there and went to dump her inside a, a forest. That was where, after beating her so much, she said she crawled. She was crawling, crawled, and was able to. In the night, she saw a police officer. She started telling the police officer what happened and everything. That was how her husband was arrested. But at the end of the day, they said they, don't, they didn't really have so much evidence against him, and this man was released. So that's how the abuse continued until they they even charged this man to court. She said she didn't know what a green card is. She didn't know what citizenship was. The guy has not even done her papers. 
she just you know she, i don't know how she met a Ghanaian woman who finally was not talking to her and you know to cut the long story short this man after about two years two years of that abuse she left you know so she started opening her eyes little by little and she left the man went to rent her own house because she was still making hair and they were paying her so she was able to pay for her rent but she said one day this man left with the child the man came because most times he wants to go to work the man will come and pick the girl they were doing it you know sometimes she'll go out if the man is going to school she'll pick the girl the man will go the man sometimes the man will come to pick the girl just like that one day he came to pick the daughter and that was all she didn't see the man again for she didn't see her daughter for 13 years for good 13 years she didn't see, the, she didn't see her daughter so right now her daughter is in maryland she's in uh she's in texas and she said because of she doesn't know what a man fed the daughter with she has remarried now but the daughter does not talk to her the man took the girl at the age of three she found that girl after 13 years found the man she looked for the man everywhere she said at the time somebody not told told her that they saw this man in ghana this man went to her family house in ghana and lied and told her family that that she's a nurse that no that she's doing prostitution in the united states so the story is too long and this video is already almost 12 minutes so i don't want uh, the video to be too long i'm going to end the story here it's, it's a story time here. it's a real life story so what i in the you know my conclusion is you know sometimes you look at people and you'll be like oh god look at this person why am i not in this position or oh god why is my own life like this why am i not why have i not got into this position I really don't know what people have been through. Uh, you know, I went to a house that day and someone that is looking at her from the di from a distance that does not know her story will be thinking that, oh, look at this woman inside this mansion. This woman, ah, this woman is enjoying her. But not knowing the story behind, you know, the glory. So guys, don't envy anybody. Don't wish to be anybody. Some people has really endured pain and suffering in this life. You see this, our makeup covers up a lot of things. So guys, I'm going to end this story. Yeah, if you love this, my content, kindly subscribe to my channel. Till next time, I love you. Bye.